Well, David, we've seen the, the rand weakening from Friday's levels, and I think we tested 752, 753 on, on Thursday and Friday, back above 760 this morning. Do you think this is a, a bit of a World Cup hangover, perhaps? Uh, I'm not so sure, Stephen. I, I think the last uh, couple of days of last week, we saw very, very good imported demand, uh, which has left the market slightly short of dollars. Uh, we've seen some foreign inflow, but uh, as I said, uh, robust uh, imported demand. And I think with equity markets weakening this morning, the euro taking a little bit of a breather, uh, weakening slightly against the dollar, the rand has succumbed to that positioning, and uh, hence we're seeing it back above 760 again. Of course, towards the end of last week, we had some economic data that, that helps to boost uh, markets globally. We had the IMF revising its growth expectations up to 4.6%. We had very strong German export data. And we also had news out about the stress tests, the results of which we're going to see in the next couple of weeks coming out of Europe. Uh, do you think we can continue this positive momentum? Obviously, this week, we do have U.S. earnings season kicking off, and that's going to be quite key, I should imagine, for markets. Well, I think so. I, I think uh, emerging market currencies and particularly the RAND will take its cue from, from, from equity movements. Uh, and we did see the Dow rise uh, sharply on uh, last Thursday on the back of uh, 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 stories that, that, that the earnings season will be quite healthy. Uh, but we also have at the moment a, a fairly sort of mixed picture as far as the global economy is concerned. But one of the, the certainties that has emerged from all of this noise is, uh, is the fact that uh, developed market interest rates will, be, will remain lower for longer. Uh, and I guess uh, over the medium term, that should find some support for the RAND. But uh, as I've said on numerous occasions, there's a number of hurdles uh, looking ahead. And I, I, I'm not too sure that the global economy is going to pan out positively for, for emerging market currencies. Uh, and I think it, uh, certainly over the next uh, six months, we might see a weakening trend as equities succumb to that, uh, to that global uh, economy softness. How about our in interest rates, David? Of course, we had the, the Reserve Bank Governor, Jill Marcus, uh, speaking last week. Um, and seemed quite dovish in her comments. We've got that meeting coming up uh, towards the end of this month. What, what's the feeling in the markets at the moment? Do you think we could get another interest rate cut as soon as this month? I think, Stephen, there's certainly an argument for a cut uh, as, as, as uh, we, we've seen the, the local economy soften a little bit over the last few weeks and months. Uh, obviously, unemployment is a, is a major issue as far as South Africa is concerned, and, and we really have to get the economy going. Uh, you know, there's been no inflationary threat for a long time now, so the argument for a cut is certainly there. Whether it's now or in September, uh, you know, that remains to be seen. But I think uh, should, should the Reserve Bank decide to cut interest rates, there wouldn't be too, too many surprised uh, investors out there. Well, our, our own economic ca calendar pretty bare this week, apart from May's retail sales. They're coming out on Wednesday. And of course, we are looking back a couple of months here. Market looking for a figure of around 3.7%. Do you think there's going to be a bit of World Cup buying included in those numbers? Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, May's a possibly a little bit early as far as uh, the influence of the World Cup is concerned. But I don't think it's a major contributor to, to, to market movements at this point in time. What we've seen over the last 12, uh, 12 the 9 to 12 months is certainly an improving domestic uh, picture as far as the economy is concerned, but more recently a, a caution about the, so the softening nature thereof. So I, I, I'm not too, uh, I don't think the, the retail sales number is going to give us too much uh, uh, information as far as we, uh, as to where the, the local economy is headed. Do you think, though, if we had a better than expected uh, number coming out on retail sales, then it could maybe stall that interest rate uh, cut if there is going to be one? Stephen, I, I think the numbers to watch there are the credit and money supply numbers uh, in conjunction with inflation, and those have been really benign for, for a very, very long time now. Uh, you know, we're seeing no credit extension whatsoever, and whatever retail sales uh, impetus that would be coming through would be probably one-off in nature, perhaps a little bit of buying uh, pre the World Cup. So I think that that's not the, the, the biggest in, indicator at the moment, and, I, and we'll continue to watch money supply and credit, credit supply uh, for indicators as, 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 to the, as to where interest rates are going. David, there's a few things I noticed that are coming out this week. Globally, we have um, second quarter growth figures coming out of China. We also have the FOMC minutes coming out, which should give some growth projections for the United States. And of course, we have an indication of U.S. consumer confidence later this week with the University of Michigan Consumer Confidence Index and also uh, U.S. retail sales. Which of these will you be watching for future direction on global markets? 
Yeah, I think, I think we've got a fairly mixed picture at the moment uh, as far as the global economy is concerned. We've seen Chinese exports uh, uh, looking very, very healthy, but we've also had uh, concerns around the Chinese housing market, which may uh, you know, spell some, some trouble down the line for, for Chinese banks. The U.S. economy, the numbers there, uh, you know, have, have been less than uh, less than confidence building. But at the same time, you know, we have uh, potential for earnings to increase. So the picture is very, very mixed. I, I'm hoping to get some some uh, confirmation uh, with the numbers coming out, particularly as to the as to the state of mind of the, uh, of the U.S. consumer. I'd be very, very surprised if those numbers were were, were uh, surprising to the top side. Uh, as I think uh, the realization setting in, in America that they also have some serious challenges ahead of them. Uh, perhaps, uh, David, you mentioned the euro right at the beginning along with the rand. We've, we've seen a bit of a weakening trend coming through for both. We had the euro at the end of last week going above 127 against the dollar. It's back around 125.60. I mean, do you think this is just a, a bit of a pullback because, as you said, uh, the market might have been caught short on dollars? Well, I, you know, the, the, the problem for me, Stephen, is, is uh, really which currency does one buy at the moment? Uh, they all, all, certainly in the developed world, they all have serious challenges that, that are facing them, not least of which are the fiscal challenges. Uh, and if, 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 if growth doesn't continue its upward uh, trajectory, you know, that spells a lot of trouble as far as the, 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 the national fiscuses are concerned around the world. So I, 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 it's hard for me to pick a developed currency at the moment that, that, that one would uh, be confident in buying because the European problems by far are not over yet. The UK has got its own challenges and certainly the US has got its own challenges. And it's really going to come down to a question of, of, of confidence uh, and, and, and how one restores that confidence. The Europeans have done quite a bit, uh, but I certainly do, do still see some trouble ahead for the euro. And perhaps that's why we're seeing uh, the likes of the RAND and other emerging market currencies doing quite well, simply because the developed world's got, a, got, got all these hurdles that they need to jump over.